This is the T400, and this is the GT1030. Let's put them head to head and see which one comes out on top. <laughs> How you doing? I'm TechDweeb. Thanks for clicking on the video today. So the, this T400 has been a really nice surprise. The performance is actually good for the price. This card was 105 bucks. Considering there isn't much in the low-end entry-level GPU space, I'm happy there are some GPUs that are available and a decent price to get gaming on. This T400 is a good choice for someone looking for a cheap new GPU. It has other benefits like only pulling 30 watts of power, comes with all the mounting brackets and three mini DisplayPort adapters. It's low profile and single slot so it'll fit in any PC and it runs cool and whisper quiet. And it can run games surprisingly good considering the price. I did a full unboxing of this card and tested it in a bunch of games, a full review, so uh, check that out, linked in the description below. It's an RTX GPU that doesn't have RTX features, which is strange to hear, but it does make sense when you understand the hardware and the purpose of this card. I've had lots of questions about that, so I have another video coming soon where I'll show you the extra features on the T400 and the T600, like RTX, ray tracing, DLSS, video encoding, all that stuff. So get subscribed so you don't miss it. I've had a few requests to compare this T400 to the GT1030, which is another low-end entry-level card, which I also reviewed on the channel, uh, link in the description below. A and it makes sense, since they're both in the same price category. And the GT1030 was always pretty much the bare minimum for a GPU that you could use for gaming. No, the GT710 doesn't count. Piece of garbage. It's not amazing, but considering the price and the unavailability of any other low-end option, it's been a compelling choice for budget-friendly gaming PCs. But you wanted to see how they compare? So, ask and you shall receive. That's what we're gonna do today. The GT1030 versus the T400. This is a GPU Smackdown. Yeah, Smackdown. Uh, should I do a thing? Like a, a GPU Smackdown intro with some graphics and music and stuff? Ugh, yeah, I guess I probably should. <laughs> the things I do for you guys. Alright, here we go. It's time for a GPU Smackdown. Smackdown! Smackdown! We've got the NVIDIA GT1030 versus the NVIDIA T400. They're going head to head to settle this once and for all. Which GPU will come out on top? This one. Maybe this one? Only one way to find out. Smackdown! Smackdown! Smackin' them down, yeah! Uh, what did you think of the intro? Pretty awesome, right? It, it took me four hours to make. So we're gonna be doing some performance tests on these GPUs. We're gonna run the same benchmarks with the same settings and we'll see which one has the better performance. And more importantly, which one has the better performance compared to the price of the card. So let's meet our contenders. In this corner, we have the GT 1030. I have an Asus bottle, which is passively cooled. It's a low profile card, but it's dual slot, so it may fit in some small form factor PCs, but won't work in lots of them that only allow one slot GPUs. It has 384 CUDA cores, 1468 MHz boost clock, 2 GB of GDDDR5 VRAM running at 3000 MHz, DirectX 12 support, and DVI and HDMI ports. Since we've had to wade through a gauntlet of scalpers and predatory resellers to get our GPUs for more than a year at this point, it's hard to find any GPUs even close to their MSRP. I'm gonna give the GT1030 a generous price of $110. Most of them go for much more than that these days, but this is the maximum that this card should cost, and, and you can still find it at this price if you look around and watch for restock on sites like uh, Newegg. So, 110 bucks, that's what we're gonna say. And in this corner, of course, we have our T400. This is a PNY model, which has this adorable and very quiet heatsink and fan, which actually does a decent job, and it's a single slot, low profile design, so this will fit in anything. 384 CUDA cores, which is the same as the GT1030, but it has a 1425 MHz boost clock, so a bit less than the GT1030 there. Uh, 2 GB of GDDR6 VRAM, so that's better, but it only runs at 1425 MHz and DirectX 12 support, and 3 MIDI display ports with adapters. Uh, this T400 cost me 105 bucks. You can still buy this card here, where I live in Canada, which is 
surprising considering the price to performance that it offers. It's kind of flying under the radar, I think, but the price goes up or down a bit every now and then. So let's make this a fair comparison and assume that this card goes for the same price as the GT 1030. So we'll just say that it costs 110 bucks. That should make it a nice and easy comparison. And it's a realistic scenario to find both these cards for $110, give or take. Place your bets in the comments below. Which one do you think will come out on top? I've tested both of these cards before and I'm, I'm pretty sure the T400 will come out ahead by a, a fair margin. But there's only one way to find out for sure. So let's play some games. <laughs> We're testing five games today, and we'll see how these two cards stack up. My test rig is running a Ryzen 7 5800X with 32 gigabytes of 3600 megahertz RAM. Uh, full specs listed in the description below. And, and I'll mention that the footage that you see on screen was captured separately. I didn't record during the benchmarks. And of course, I ran all the benchmarks on both cards with the exact same settings because I'm a science guy. I told you guys I do all sorts of science. Uh, let's start off with Shadow the Tomb Raider, running at 720p, low settings. I pretty much stuck to low settings for all these tests, because this GT1030 can't handle much more than that. Uh, here in Shadow the Tomb Raider, we're averaging 33 FPS. Uh, not amazing, but it's playable, and the game still looks good at these settings. If you're playing with a controller, then the game will feel fine at these FPS. Now, considering the GT1030 costs 110 bucks, when you factor in the price by dividing the frames per second by the cost of the card, we end up with 0 0.30 frames per dollar. This will be a metric that I'll be using to compare the value of these cards. O obviously, you want more frames per second compared to the price you pay, so the higher the frames per dollar, the better the value. So let's see how our T400 did in this same benchmark. We averaged 44 FPS, which is much better, much better indeed. And considering the price, that gives us a frames per dollar of 0 0.40. So in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, the T400 offers about 25% more performance for the same price. This will let you run games at a higher FPS or higher resolutions or higher settings. So it's a win for the T400 in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, but we can't rely on just one game test. I am a science guy after all. So, let's see how these cards stack up in Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Running at just 720p, low settings, our GT1030 didn't do very well. Not very well at all, to be honest. It only was able to manage 25 FPS, which is bordering on unplayable. I'd probably lower the resolution scale a little, but getting lower than 720p really doesn't look good. At least the 1% lows weren't too bad, so at least it would feel like a consistent 25 FPS. But in terms of value, we're getting 0.23 frames per dollar. But compared to the T400, it's not even close. The T400 came out way ahead with 39 FPS. And at the same $110 price tag, that lets the T400 come out ahead in value as well with a frames per dollar value of 0.35. That's 52% better than the GT1030. That's a huge difference in performance. And if these cars were priced differently, there might be some competition here. But even if the GT1030 cost a bit less than the T400, which it doesn't, but even if it did, it would have to cost substantially less to be considered a good value. And GPU availability has to be taken into consideration too. I could buy the T400 today. I can't buy a GT1030 from a Canadian seller at a reasonable price. So there doesn't really seem to be any reason why you'd choose a GT1030 over a T400. But the GT1030 might not be down and out yet. What about GTA 5? This is an older game, and it runs well on almost any hardware because it's so well optimized. Surely this will let our GT1030 show its true potential. And it looks like it does. Running at 1080p with normal settings, our $110 GT1030 will average 75 FPS. That's not bad. Not too bad at all. And you could run the game at 900p with high settings or the same FPS or very high settings if you're okay with a sub 60 FPS. In terms of value, the GT1030 gets 0.68 frames per dollar, which sounds great on paper, but the T400 still comes out on top. 93 FPS. Not quite as much of a difference as the other games, which is understandable. When you're dealing with higher FPS, it puts more stress on the CPU so the GPU doesn't have to work as hard. If we ran at higher settings, I think the difference would be more extreme. Still, the T400 gets a frames per dollar value of 0.84, which again is about 25% more than the GT1030. At the same-ish price of $110, the T400 clearly comes out on top, at least in these first few games that we tested. Let's try a first-person shooter. Far Cry 5. With FPS games, I always want a higher FPS. Oh, that, that sounded weird. FPS with higher FPS. I, I mean, you guys know what I mean, but you, you have to admit that's confusing. Oh, whatever. 
I like higher FPS in my FPSs, is, is, <laughs> cause I, uh, cause I prefer to play them on mouse and keyboard, and I need them to feel snappy. Big open world FPS games are tricky on low end hardware, cause they can be pretty intensive on the GPU, and they're almost always held back by the low VRAM on these low end cards. Two gigabytes really isn't enough for graphically intensive big open world games. So it's no surprise that our GT 1030 only got 24 FPS and Far Cry 5 running at 720p, low settings. You know, I, I might accept that for a third person action exploration game or a, a role play game, but not in first person shooters. That's just too low to have fun, in my opinion. But yeah, we could lower the res scale, but going lower than 720p makes things look so darn blurry that I personally wouldn't even bother. And if you look at those 1% lows, it's not a smooth 24 FPS. It's 24 FPS with lots of stutters. And, and 24 FPS on a $110 card amounts to a frames per dollar of 0.22. But can the T400 play Far Cry 5? 720p low settings with a playable FPS? Well, in my benchmark, we got 50 FPS. 50. Can you believe that? I mean, it's only 720p with low settings. It's not going to blow anyone away. But compared to the GT 1030, that's a huge step up. 50 FPS on a $110 GPU gives our T400 a frames per dollar value of 0.45. That's more than double the value of the GT 1030. I suspect the GGDR6 VRAM has come to the rescue in this case. The T400's 11 FPS 1% lows are great, so we're definitely held back, but compared to the GT1030, they're much improved. I don't know that I'd recommend getting a T400 if you wanted to play this sort of game, but it's a much more viable option than anything else in this price range, as far as I can tell. I'm happy to be proven wrong. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you have a, a, G a GPU suggestion for a new GPU in the 100 to 150 $50 price range that could perform better than a T400, because I really don't think there's anything. Finally, the most modern and demanding game in our test suite, Cyberjog 2077. You're probably aware that this game is very GPU intensive, and it's not optimized well to boot, so if there's a game that will stress our GPUs to their maximum potential, it'll be this game. I don't think it's going to be a surprise that our GT 1030 doesn't hold up well. Only 20 FPS. That's not an enjoyable experience, especially because it's a first person shooter. I mean, we're running at 720p low here. And at 20 FPS average, the value of our GT 1030 ends up being 0.18 frames per dollar. <laughs> Yikes. The 1% lows aren't great either at just 8 FPS. Not as bad as Far Cry, but you can still totally feel the frame dips in the game. I find any 1% low below 20 or 30 FPS is, is really noticeable in games, no, no matter the game or the GPU. But in FPS games, it's very distracting. So, how well do you think the T400 did? Well, I think at this point it should be pretty obvious that it's much better than the GT 1030. And yeah, it is. The, G the T400 gets 37 FPS average, which isn't amazing, obviously. Playing FPS games at 720p low with only 37 FPS, but it's doable. It's a playable frame rate. And those 25 FPS 1% lows mean that it's not too stuttery. 37 FPS gives us a frames per dollar value of 0.33. That's 80% better than the GT 1030. 80%. The T400 isn't even playing fair at this point. It's not just a win, it's a freaking slaughter. Again, it's my opinion that the massive difference in performance comes from the GDDDR5 versus the GDDDR6 VRAM. Well, we learned that the GT 1030 with DDR4 performs almost half as well as the DDR5 version. The memory speed makes a big difference, especially when the bottleneck is actually the VRAM limit. On almost every test, when we get close to 100% utilization of the 2 gigabytes of VRAM buffer, we lose way more performance on the GT 1030 compared to the T400. So, in some ways, I feel bad for the 1030, because it was a great little GPU that got a lot of low-end budget gamers started with PC gaming. And there's lots of gamers still using it today. It, it did the trick, and it would still do the trick if it could be found at a good price. But if we calculate the average FPS at frames per dollar of both of these cards, the GT 1030 gets 35.4 frames per second on average, and at $110, that gives us a frames per dollar value of 0.32 on average. Compare that to the $100 $110 T400, which averaged 52.6 FPS, which comes to a frames per dollar value of 0.47. So the big conclusion is that if both the cards are the same price, and as far as I can tell, that's the going rate for both of these cards these days, we're looking at a T400 being 49% better. 
let's just call it 50%. 50% more performance for the T400 compared to the GT1030 for the exact same price. <laughs> there really is no competition at this price point, but there may still be a case for the GT1030 if the price is right. By my calculations, if the T400 could be found for $110, then the GT1030 would offer similar value if you could find that for around $75. At $75, the GT1030 would be a value equal to the T400. Yeah, you'll be getting less FPS, but you'll be paying less too. So at least the value of the GT1030 would be on par with the value of the T400. And you could make the case that buying a GT1030 makes sense in that case. But that's a, that's a fantasy land scenario. We don't live in fantasy land. We live in the gritty, harsh real world where toilet paper scalpers rob you at knife point for your 6500 XT pre-orders and gas at inflated prices can only be bought by mortgaging out your crappy apartment in your mom's basement for half its value in NFTs. <sighs> so buy a T400 if you need an entry-level GPU and don't look back. If you find a cheap used GT1030, it'll go for that. Whatever gets you up a gaming. I just want you to get the best GPU that your Ethereum can buy and still leave enough left over for you to buy some expired cans of vegetable soup and sad stale candy from the dollar store. Like I said, I could still buy this GPU here in Canada, but I've heard from you guys that you can't find it at good prices or at all in lots of places in the world. I do feel like the winds of change are upon us. I went to the computer store earlier today and I saw GPUs on the shelves. I even bought one. <laughs> I'm excited to show it to you guys, actually. I expect a review coming soon. But in the meantime, well, what do you guys think? Are you looking for an entry-level, low-end GPU so you can get up and gaming? Can you get your hands on a T400 where you live? Are you rocking a GT1030 and still having a great time? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And while you're down there, click the thumbs up button if you like the video. Or the thumbs down button if you just bought a GT1030 for $110 and now you're regretting all your life choices. Subscribe so you don't miss new videos by yours truly. I'm TechDweeb. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.